The Kia Optima, yeah, basically a Sonata, but the look is real different. We'll see about the rest as we drive a 2011 Optima EX and check the tech. Hyundai's on a roll these days, but less is being said about its corporate cousin, Kia. Until lately, Kia was mostly seen as a cheaper version of a Hyundai. That's not cool. But now that Hyundai underpinnings are a good thing, Kia's building on that with its own bold styling, thanks to nabbing former Audi design boss Peter Schreier. He's the guy who did the TT. While this is the sibling of the Sonata, it shares little of that car's swoopy external looks. Instead, the Optima is kind of bold, more handsome of the two, sort of a Demi Saab to Hyundai's Demi Lexus. Inside, the same applies. The Kia exhibits the now rare driver-centered cockpit layout that most cars have given up. Now, the first thing you notice in this Optima is it ain't a Sonata in the cabin. The Sonata's got a whole different thing with this Darth Vader mask and uh, kind of weird face down here, and it's very centered. This car is totally cockpit-oriented. It reminds me a lot of a Saab cabin. I don't know where they picked up that design motif, but you've got the three-ring thing. It's very Hyundai-Kia, but this sort of angled cockpit panel, a lot of folks have commented to me, hey, I don't see that very often, and I like it. So it's a very driver-centric setting. You've got a steering wheel crammed with lots of interesting buttons. They're useful. Media on the left, cruise control on the right. Eco trip and reset on the left. We'll talk about that in a minute. And here's your voice command and your Bluetooth controls over here. By the way, the Bluetooth rig is standard on this Optima EX. Let's go to the head unit. You've got your single CD slot right here, which also digests MP3 CDs, though not WMA, I don't think. Here's your navigation screen, pretty good resolution. That's optional, by the way. We'll talk about the pricing a little later. But you've got touch screen, voice command, as I mentioned, but not really kind of any sort of standardized controller. There's no Audi MMI or BMW iDrive. It's either touch or voice, or you've got some dedicated buttons. But this is not a master jog wheel, nothing like that. Lots of buttons for the nav system. It gets a little bit fuzzy here. You have map and voice. Not quite sure why those are all on one button. A little odd. Destination is a destination screen. Route is a separate set of route options. You see they kind of split this up a little bit much for my tastes. But it's easy to use. And notice the response is quite quick on this guy. To do a destination address, it's real simple. And it moves quickly. I like that. Now let's go to our media options, AM, FM, no HD radio available on this car, any way, shape, or form. Satellite radio is the serious flavor. The media button brings you up to our phone, which is Bluetooth streaming, as well as the Bluetooth hands-free I talked about. We've also got the CD option in here. If I didn't have my iPod plugged in, which is another option, I do have these two connectors down here, standard analog aux, and I've got the USB jack. The only weird thing is Hyundai Kia still use this guy, which you're not going to find at Best Buy if you lose it. It's a USB aux Siamese connector. They move audio over one connector, do control and charging over another. Now getting all the sound out of there is a six speaker, kind of generic audio system base. Or we have the Infinity Rig, which is obviously noted up here. It's part of a premium package, by the way. Gives you a variety of settings. You know, you get a mid control, which I don't think the base rig has. Uh, auto volume control might not be on the base rig. Aside from that, it's not fancy. The transmission is a one choice only on this guy. It's a six speed automatic, a true automatic. It's not a CVT, it's not an automated manual. It's got a little sport shifting gate here on the left, which isn't all that sporty. They all work about the same. Okay, the last cool thing in this car, which is kind of mid-tech, is this roof. Well, roofs. One over me, one over them. You've got this control right here, which does a dual power rollback of the screens, and then slides this big glass panel up over the second row. They still end up with a pretty good glass top overhead. Or better yet, if you're going to be a little more magnanimous, just bring your panel forward and give it a little kick up to tilt, and then everyone gets a full glass overhead. Now what's most interesting about this engine is not that it's a 2.4 liter side saddle inline four, I've seen about a million of those, but these three letters, GDI, gasoline direct injection, kind of cutting edge stuff, especially for a car in this price class. The Sonata has the same powertrain. 
There's also a turbo, by the way, and a hybrid coming on this Optima, but we'll cover those in another video. Here are the numbers. 200 horsepower out of this guy, 186 foot-pounds of torque. Zero to 60 is about 9.4 seconds for this 3,300-pound car. And the mileage is pretty darn good, 2434. Okay, on the road, this car is not terribly impressive on paper with 200 horsepower, but the power is ready and willing. That's what a car like this needs to have, is power across a wide range of RPMs. And it does have that. Uh, the combination of the direct injection and the other technologies being used here, like this Eco we've got going on, give you really good fuel economy for a biggish car. And at the same time, it's not a gutless car. Now the Eco button down here that I mentioned. What that does is modify throttle response shift points on the transmission, and air conditioning, which means the air conditioner is going to engage less often, as I understand it. All of those lead to better fuel economy through different means. When it's in drive and you're in eco, you definitely feel a difference. The car gets a little non-responsive, but for drivers that want to maximize their MPG, they don't care. And if you're cruising down a boulevard, perfect mode to be in. But I found driving around town in eco mode was annoying. It made the car kind of rubbery and numb, so pink, I popped out of it most of the time. That said, what am I seeing here in my average? 19.9 MPG. I've probably been more city than highway by far. Up and down a lot of hills, and like I say, out of eco mode. So I'm pushing it down toward the bottom of its average range. The steering is very heavily weighted on center. So once you come off center, it doesn't really want to stay there. It wants to go back to center very strongly, which all cars do. The thing is, this one is very heavily weighted back down toward the middle. I bring this up because in long, sort of leisurely driving on curved highways or boulevards, you kind of need two hands to keep it in the curve. One hand will get fatigued, and that kind of takes away from the everyday driving comfort a little bit. But overall, it's nice to see a put-together new entrant to go up against Camry and Accord, and not one that makes you think, okay, what can it do being a second-rate car? Now you just have to grade it as a first-rate car. Okay, let's price this Optima. Again, this is a 2011 EX. They only come front-wheel drive. It's kind of a mid-trim. There is an SX, a sportier one above it, and like I mentioned, there's also a hybrid and a turbo for another time. This guy will base at 23.2. To go see that style, you got really one package and maybe one other to think about. The one you gotta get is the tech package, 2,000 bucks. That gets you the navigation system, that whole super speedy interface, Sirius satellite radio, the better infinity sound, the backup camera for two grand, kind of a steal. Then there's this premium package that gets you the panoramic roof, which I like, and heated and cooled front seats, power passenger seat, and the rather novel heated rear seats. I think I'd go for that too.